Hello friends, this is Erica with Aurora Heart Healing, back again with some more interesting subjects. Today, I want to talk about separation. Separation comes in so many different ways. Separation can come from a divorce, a friendship, running its course and not being able to continue forward. Separation can come in the form of children and their parents. No matter how old the children are, separation is still separation. And today I wanted to shine light on separation and what it really does do to people and what it means to people and what ripple effects can happen after separation. So the first is relationships. Separation in relationships can happen for so many different reasons. One of the big things that have been coming up to me in the past few weeks and even just reminiscing about different times in my life was separation in relationship through self-sabotage. Believe it or not, we do that. <laughs> um, Self-sabotage is a way that we can separate ourselves from what we really want in this world because of fear. Fear of being alone, fear of being abandoned, fear of being hurt, fear that could have happened a long time ago and that we just have not resolved as of yet or we didn't understand that that's where it was coming from. So fear. I'll give you a story back a few years back now. Um, my husband and I were dating and it was going great and we had a really big argument. And I've always been a big proponent of seeking counsel from others. Of course, you want to seek counsels, counsel from people that have guidance and wisdom that most align with what you want in your life. So I definitely wouldn't ask a single person what I should do in a relationship. Not because the single person might not have wisdom in relationships, but because currently their situation is the opposite of relationship. So I was in a therapy session with my amazing therapist that I had for a long time then and her and I were talking and I told her that I didn't know if we should if I should continue in this relationship and she had talked to me extensively about a lot of different things and at that point she said I need you to stop I think you are self-sabotaging right now that is definitely not what I wanted to hear and that's not what I thought was going to come out of her mouth <laughs> at that moment in time. Trust me, I was shocked and frustrated too because I had been working on self-sabotage for a long time and my frustration came from, what do you mean? I, I don't want to sabotage myself. I don't want to hurt my, my hap happiness and my family. But... As we continued to talk and I resisted the trigger reaction to resist, I thought to myself, okay, what does she mean by how I'm sabotaging myself? And as she continued to talk to me about it, I, I clearly understood what was happening. And she said, we came to the conclusion, both of us, actually I was afraid of being abandoned so in my trigger reaction I wanted to leave first I was creating separation before I could be separated from that was a huge realization for me 
it was impactful and it really made me think, whoa, I am creating separation because of my fear. And I'm trying to push away my fear, my fear of being abandoned, which is causing me to push away someone that loves me and that is not wanting to abandon me. As I continue to unravel this huge truth that was revealed to me, I understood more and more how I had separated myself from really good things in my life, from fear, fear of being rejected, fear of being abandoned, just fear in general. So as I continue on this journey, I have noticed more and more in what I see that come in and out of my office. It's a separation of ourselves and separation to the extreme lengths of separation can really cause injury to ourselves and to others as well. In the spiritual realm, I see separation as entities. Entities that felt so ashamed of them and their selves inside that they pushed away parts of themselves and said, no, I don't want that. I don't like that part of me, so I'm going to push it away. I don't want to. I can't. It hurts. But would you push away a child if they were crying and hurting? Most of us would say no. We would hold that child and nurture them back to wholeness, back to feeling okay, feeling good. But what about those kids that don't get that love and that affection? They are separated for longer, especially if they don't learn how to love themselves. We're causing separation. The entities that I've worked with, the people that call it evil or bad, the more that I see it, the more that I understand that it's just an extreme separation of ourselves. Separation of what we feel in our bodies and what we do with it. I remember for a really long time, I would go to my office job and I was a supervisor and I just feel like I was trudging through water, trudging through tar, <laughs> getting through the day just waiting, looking at that, oh, when's my break? If I got one, of course. When's the next moment that I can just be without having to worry about anybody else? During that time, I remember how hard it was. My emotions, my mind, everything was so cloudy, so dark, so bleh. And as I continued to see and understand myself, I started seeing that the lucrative job that paid well didn't fill my soul. My soul's calling was to help people to do what I do every day now, but it didn't really match with my, what my parents had instilled in me was important. It didn't match what society out there, the society I had surrounded myself with at that time, felt important. It wasn't real. As I continued to do things that did not make me happy and that made me feel low and down, I started getting migraines, and started getting headaches, and started feeling sick. And I would get up and just say, oh, I just don't feel like being in there today. I kept separating my wants and my needs from my reality. And I became depressed, dark. I became sad. I started to push down all of those feelings that I felt. I pushed them away and shoved them out. 
no, I don't want to feel that right now. Becoming more and more numb as I went. What did that cause in me? Separation. What did that cause in me? Fear, anxiety, panic that I was getting so sick that I felt like I was dying. And what did it ultimately do to me? Depression is the ultimate indicator that something needs to change. And within me, that darkness I felt from the depression was the thing that I needed to say, no, this isn't right for me. This is not the kind of life that I want to live. So I moved forward and moved on. I brought myself back into a space of whole by understanding what my needs and wants are, what my calling, what my passion really is. Can I say that I stopped working then? No. I still had some more lessons to learn. I still needed a little bit more understanding and pruning and really getting down deep inside of myself to know what it is that would make me happy and fulfilled. But as I continued to grow and continue to learn, I learned more and more. Okay, I had been doing this because my parents or my family or my friends thought that this would be the best way for me to go. But what is it that I want to do? What is it that lights me up inside? That makes me say my soul is complete every single time I do this. It was energy work. And the more that I did it, the more that I got to impact lives, the more that my life felt like I was in the right direction. I was no longer separating myself from my true heart's calling, from my desire to be there, to help. In this past few years, I've done a lot of volunteer work. And as I've seen, so many people are sad and frustrated with their lives. But is it because they're not happy with who they are or is it because they're not acting on what they want? Some we've got to repress. Some we really want to embrace. And maybe we wouldn't want to repress so much if we rep if we embraced more of what we needed and wanted in our lives. Finding time to bring ourselves back into whole is important. Not just for us, but for the children that we are with, for the children that we are going to mentor and help grow and help learn or help teach. So for today, I want you to think about what you have separated, how you have separated within yourself. What do you really, really want in your life, but you deny yourself because it's not fitting the box of what other people want you to do? Is it a job that feels soul-sucking inside? Is it a passion that you see but are afraid that other people will judge you for? I've been there. You get the choice to create your reality. Don't separate your reality from what you really truly long inside. Your longings are important. Your passion is important. Your life decisions are important. The more that you align what you want with who you are and what you need, the more into wholeness you are, the greater the chances of wholeness instead of separation. Those sad spirits that separated themselves from their emotions long to be whole again, long to be complete. And all they need to be that is to know who they are and what it is that they really wanted in this lifetime. 
So today, what is it that you want in this lifetime? What is it that connects you, that lights your passions, that puts a fire in you, that says, oh, yes, holy yes, instead of a, I guess so, I guess yes. I don't really want to, but I will do it because I have to. Have some time to think about that. Until the next one.